Breaking news this hour. Russia has launched airstrikes on Kyiv and the western city of Lviv. The mayor of Kyiv, Vitaly Klitschko, has said there were several explosions and that air defense systems were trying to repel the attack. Now, in the last few hours, we've received these images of an explosion of a missile seen on the Kyiv skyline. Lviv is close to the Polish border, and Polish and Allied aircraft are reported to have been activated. It appears that infrastructure has been targeted rather than the city itself. Now, there are no reports of any major damage at this point. In the last few minutes, we've heard from Poland's armed forces who say the attack in western Ukraine violates Poland's airspace. However, people have been taking shelter in underground bunkers. Russia has been pounding Ukraine for days and Moscow has indicated its, uh, its revenge for Ukrainian attacks during the recent presidential election. Now, that news is brace, breaking at the moment, and we're going to look at this uh, closer. With me is Vincent McAvenny. Thank you so much. Um, now, it is the early hours of this breaking. What mm. more do we know right now? At local time, it seems that this started at around 5 a.m. with strikes across Ukraine. A national alert went out and the Ministry of Defence said it was engaging its air defence protocols. And people headed once again into their shelters. We've seen some images of people down in the metro stations in Kyiv, for instance. Now, Kyiv itself was targeted. Uh, the military spokesperson there says that around a dozen missiles uh, in the vicinity of the city were shot down by their air defences. There are no reports of any damage or any casualties so far. Interestingly, though, the northwestern border region of Lviv. Now, the city itself, the mayor says, wasn't targeted, but critical infrastructure around the city was. Now, they said that more than 20 missiles and seven attack drones had been launched into that region for that attack. And what's interesting is, as you mentioned, Poland, a neighbor, a NATO uh, ally, of course, says that one of those missiles at least breached its airspace for under one minute. So that is encroaching on NATO airspace. So they have ramped up their defenses. They have got their aircraft uh, deployed and ready. Uh, but this is a bit of an escalation uh, this morning. Last night, President Zelensky gave his usual evening address and he responded very critically to claims by Russian President Vladimir Putin that Ukraine was in some way involved with the attack in the uh, concert hall on Friday night just outside of Mos Moscow that claimed over 100, uh, claimed 133 lives at least. Uh, President Zelensky said that uh, President Putin and Russian officials were scum for trying to link that to Ukraine, saying that they had no involvement in that whatsoever. So far this morning, though, the Russian government has not made any comments on these latest strikes into Ukraine. All right, thank you for that. And we'll have more updates um, from Vincent and our other correspondents as this story progresses. Now, meanwhile, in Russia, the country is observing a national day of mourning for the victims of Friday's attack on a concert hall near Moscow. Now, more than 130 people were killed when gunmen stormed the packed auditorium minutes before a rock band was due on stage. President Putin has suggested that four gunmen arrested on Saturday were trying to flee to Ukraine, a claim that's been strongly rejected by President Vladimir Zelensky. Now, Steve Rosenberg reports a war Morning, though, you may find some of the details distressing. In what was left of Crocus City, the full horror of what had happened became clear. The attackers had torched the building. A rock concert became an inferno. But first, the gunman had opened fire. <laughs> to kill as many of the audience as possible. In one constant stream of bullets. Russia says the four gunmen who did this have been arrested and claims they plan to cross into Ukraine. Kiev denies any connection to the attack. It's Islamic State that's claimed responsibility. President Putin promised vengeance. All the perpetrators and organizers of this crime and those who ordered it will be justly and inevitably punished, whoever they are, whoever is guiding them. Those terrorists, murderers, monsters, face the same unenviable fate, retribution and oblivion. In Moscow, there were long queues to donate blood for the many who'd been wounded in the attack and rushed to hospital. Outside Crocus City Hall, 
a hint of the devastation inside. The first thing you notice here isn't the sight of the building, it's the smell. The air is thick with smoke because the concert hall was burning all night. And the next thing you notice is what's happening over there. People are bringing flowers, creating a makeshift shrine to the dead. Margarita knows she's lucky. She was in the building when the shooting began and got out alive. When I got home, I hugged my children, fell to my knees and said, I can't begin to describe what happened there. They were shooting at us. I was hysterical. My husband could barely watch. The children were terrified. They just hugged me. But so many died here. There were so many victims of the deadliest attack in Russia in 20 years. President Putin has declared a national day of mourning. Steve Rosenberg, BBC News, Moscow. Well, as we heard, President Vladimir Putin has connected Ukraine to the attack. But President Vladimir Zelensky, Ukraine's president, has reacted to those accusations that his country was involved. One more thing. What happened in Moscow yesterday, it's obvious that Putin and other scumbags are just trying to find someone else to blame. Their methods are always the same. We've seen it all before. Destroyed buildings and shootings and explosions. And they are always looking for someone to blame. So those are the claims, but what do we know about who was actually responsible for the Moscow attack? Here's the BBC's Gordon Carrera. Chaos and confusion as gunmen begin shooting inside the concert hall at Crocus City. This footage, verified by the BBC, shows the gunmen in the foyer. But who are they? ISIS, the group calling itself Islamic State, today issued a statement saying its men seen here were responsible. That's not something we can independently confirm. And the issue of who was responsible is deeply contentious. More than two weeks ago, the US issued this warning to its citizens in Moscow, saying what it called extremists, thought to mean ISIS, might target large gatherings, including concerts. It communicated the intelligence directly to Moscow. But three days before the shooting, a Kremlin statement was issued in which Vladimir Putin dismissed that warning, describing it as provocative and an attempt to destabilize Russia. The Russian security services say they stopped this car and that the four men involved in the attack have been arrested. But rather than say anything about ISIS, the Kremlin suggested they were heading away from the scene and towards Ukraine. That might be an attempt to deflect blame there and away from Moscow. One of Russia's TV channels even broadcast this last night. A fake video of a top Ukrainian security official suggesting Ukraine was involved. BBC verifiers established two different videos were put together to make this, with the words most probably generated by artificial intelligence. After any attack, there are always questions about whether it could have been stopped. But in this case, those questions look especially difficult for Moscow. Gordon Carrera, BBC News. Well, Stephen Fish is a professor of political science at the University of California. He said the attacks in Moscow were an embarrassment for President Putin. We now know that Western security agencies had warned Russia, perhaps some weeks ago, that this was coming. And they either ignored it or they were contemptuous of this information or they used it very ineffectively. And what Putin now is facing is a situation in which he's being shown that Western security agencies know more about what's going on in Russia than his own security agencies do when it comes to confronting terrorism. This is a very bad look for Putin. And so what do you make of the fact he wants to point the finger, he is pointing the finger at Ukraine rather than Islamic State group? Well, and look, I mean, what we saw in your last report shows just how crazy this is getting. I suppose that the Ukrainian government is now a Jewish-led Nazi Islamo-fascist state or something like that. This is the world that Putin lives in. 
And, you know, given what we saw in your last report as well, this is just crazy land. And, you know, to the extent that Putin pushes this on Ukraine and tries to make it a story about Ukrainian culpability, which is absolutely ludicrous, I think we have grounds to wonder whether he himself was involved in this attack. We have to remember that going back to 1999, when he was on his way to the presidency, there was a series of four very suspicious apartment blasts. At the time, Putin had just become prime minister. And he and his new FSB head, Nikolai Petrushov, who is still his main security henchman, uh, it seems there's overwhelming circumstantial evidence that they actually blew up those apartment buildings to create a pretext for their war in, Ch in Chechnya and also to rally public support around Putin and around his war. Now, I don't think that happened this time. It looks like the evidence is that, in fact, this ISIS-K group did it. But we know that Putin is not above this. We know that Putin has done this before. We, or we, we suspect very strongly that he has, that he's actually engineered what he called an Islamic or an Islamist terrorist act for his own political purposes. So right. again, I don't think that happened here, but to the extent that he presses this on Ukraine, you do have to wonder a little bit. Now, that was Stephen Fish. Of course, uh, President Putin and the Kremlin have denied any links uh, to this attack or the previous attacks that he was referring to. Uh, and in this instance, it's important to say that the United States also says it has evidence to corroborate uh, that the Islamic State group may have been involved in this attack.